What's up guys, we're back with a NECA Turtles review, taking a look at a, well, a big one, literally today. We're taking a look at the first quarter scale tune turtle. So this is their giant size turtles line. And I'm a huge fan of the quarter scale movie stuff. I normally don't buy figures that are that big, but they had to happen. And they are some of my favorite figures. They're awesome. They're great interpretations of the movie turtles. And I'm hoping that this is going to be the same because this does a very nostalgia thing for me when it comes to this because I love the giant size turtles as a kid. And, you know, I don't know if we're going to get giant size Playmates turtles anytime soon. So this is probably the closest thing we're going to get. And I think uh, I think we've got something cool here. So we've got him here in, of course, a very giant size box. They unfortunately were not able to get the clear to use the vintage styling when it comes to the boxes. So this is still in the same kind of motif as the Target exclusive stuff. So green and the yellow. But you've got Raph there in the window. Uh, product shot on the side with the happy face. Product shot on the side with the sort of angry face. And then the back of the box has got a bunch of showcases of how he moves, some of the accessories he comes with, then sort of a little uh, call out for the fact that the face plates come apart so you can swap parts around. And then there's even cross cell down here on the bottom with all four turtles. So yeah, let's do it. Let's pull this big guy out and take a look. And here we go. Out of the package are quarter scale, giant size, tune wrap. So this guy is kind of a, like a progression almost of what we have been seeing with the cartoon turtles into this larger format. So this guy is very similar to the, you know, seven inch scale figures that you have, but he is very different in terms of construction. And we're gonna see, I believe, some of this in the upcoming Disguise four pack, but I don't know if we're gonna see all of it. There is some stuff here that I don't know for sure if is actually gonna be made into the smaller scale figures. So uh, let's see what this guy can do, see how he moves around. It's pretty familiar territory, but at the same time, it's very different. As always, that makes no sense, but it sort of makes sense. So we've got a head that can look up. He can look down. And this is uh, aided by a independently articulated neck, so you can see the neck bobble in there. You can rotate it all the way around. Uh, you've got really good tilt action on that head and the neck. And this time around, we've got articulated uh, bandana ties. So they rotate and they have a hinge, so you can actually move them uh, up and down and in and out if you if you so choose to do stuff like that, which is kind of cool, especially since you only get one. They don't need to make an extra one. Doesn't really matter. You've got arms that go out at the shoulders. They, of course, will rotate. You do have to watch the shell, as is pretty much always the case. They're going to get in the way. But they go forward all the way, and then they go backwards some, and then you can rotate them all the way up if you need. We've got bicep swivel. We've got elbow swivel, and this is one thing that is new, and I don't know if, if it's gonna be translated into the smaller scale figures or not. We've got actual double jointed uh, elbows here. They don't, however, provide like tons and tons of extra range. Don't get me wrong, it does help, but the fact that the elbow pad still has to run through that joint does stop it from going like, say, one notch over, I suppose. But it is easier, and it's and it's honestly just a more fluid joint too. It makes, it just makes for a, a quality of life improvement almost. And then you've got hinges and rotation at those wrists. Um, as far as the waist goes, this is still very familiar territory for for a turtle, uh, especially a NECA turtle, where we've got. Let me move the arm out of the way here, where we've got the you know, like the separation right there. So you've got the separation, and it does kind of rock back and forth a little bit but it doesn't really do much. It's not gonna twist too much. It'll twist a little bit, uh, so maybe it's a little bit better than, than you might expect, but it still doesn't allow for like crunching or anything like that. It's not anything of that nature, but it is functional to some degree. Uh, as far as the legs go, this is very much going to be a quarter scale style thing. So if you're not familiar with a quarter scale figure, they have ratchets uh, at the crotch. So there is going to be some serious clicking here. So we'll, let's move that arm up. So we've got legs that go out. And there's your, your click warning. They go forward, about that far. They also do kick backwards slightly, but not a great deal. There does seem like there could be a thigh cut at the at the hips, but I don't really think there is, and from what I understand, there isn't. 
Uh, there, it looks like a normal hip situation, but they don't move. I've hit them with heat just to be sure, and they don't seem to move for me. So if, if someone knows for sure, let me know. But I think that's because they have swiveling double jointed knees. So this actually will twist here. So you get rotation from the top of the knee down. And then we've got our normal NECA style double joints. They are pretty tight, so beware. Uh, but I have not... Yeah, you can see they're pretty tight right there. Outside of the supposed potential uh, thigh cut or thigh swivel, I haven't felt the need to actually heat anything up. I just wanted to be sure there. And then we've got hinges, which are actually really nice, and rocker at the ankle. So that's a definite change from uh, the previous smaller scale figures because they had ball pegs down there. So there aren't tons and tons of changes here, but I think the ones that are here are pretty meaningful. Double jointed elbows, they're not wildly functional in terms of just, you know, giving you tons of range, but they're easier to manipulate. They don't feel like they're going to tear up the elbow pads. I've always been worried about that because they sort of get sucked into those single jointed elbows. These, they just have a nice cavity for them there. The hips do seem to be a little bit better as far as the overall uh, two-piece construction there. And then you've got an interesting swiveling double jointed knee, but honestly, the feet on these guys, I think, is probably one of the bigger improvements just because of the fact that those ball pegs on the regular turtles really don't help you pose them. They really don't get all that uh, use when it comes to being dynamic. This will really help when it comes to having the traditional uh, hinge and a rocker. Aesthetically, I am, well, pretty, pretty happy. I mean, there's really not anything that I want to say negative about this. This is, however a distinct change from what we have been seeing for a number of years when it comes to NECA turtles. So this is not just the same sculpt we've been seeing for years scaled up into a 15-ish inch tall figure. This is a new direction for the look. It's a very style guide kind of look when it comes to the overall appearance on the turtles, as far as the faces and everything goes. Uh, you know, this is something like you'd expect to see on like a lunchbox or a, or a folder or something like that, except this is still very much the early color scheme, so the darker greens. And as is always the case with the tune stuff, you do have that bisecting line that cuts them down the middle. So you've got a lighter green and then a darker green or a sort of dark green and then a darker darker green which i do really like i mean it adds to the whole cartoon aesthetic uh, you've got some cell shading going on on the front of the shell there all of those black line work pieces all over just to accentuate the musculature and then you've got of course the sort of uh, cell shaded in enhanced line work when it comes to the belt too so you've got it all over there and then that sort of heavy black on the r just to bring it out the overall design and sculpt is still very familiar. So if you've handled the smaller scale figures, you kind of know what you're getting into. Uh, it's not too far apart from that. It's mostly just in the overall construction and then the head sculpts. Uh, back as far as the shell goes, looks really good. Nice dark brown with the light brown. And then of course, you know, you've got the same kind of situation going on with the legs uh, that we would have with the rest of the figure. So light half on the front, dark half on the back. And the same goes for all the pads. So the pads are lighter on the front than they are on the back. Just again, to give you that sort of cast in shadow, uh, shell shaded look. Cell shaded. How many times am I going to say shell in this review? So we've got, honestly, just a really solid sculpt with really nice paint applications here. I have not really seen too many issues of uh, chipping joints or anything like that. There have been a few, but overall that whole thing doesn't seem to be too prevalent on this figure for me. Colors really pop. Sculpt is nice. It's a very familiar figure while, of course, being something wholly different because it is a big monstrous, beefy 15-inch uh, tall figure that does kind of push on the nostalgia buttons for me because I do love me some vintage giant-sized turtles. And then, of course, you know, like I said, to top him off, we've got this new head sculpt, which we are going to be seeing in the smaller scale line. And this is, of course, full of gimmicks this time around. So we'll talk about that here in a second, but this head does come apart so you can swap expressions basically. And I think it's a really cool idea. Uh, the only thing that I think maybe leaves a little bit to be, des be desired is there are two little notches right above the nose that kind of irk me just a little bit because you can see where sort of the pieces fit together, but at the same time, it almost looks like part of that line work. So it sort of gets lost in there anyway. So it's really maybe not a big deal. Reds on the bandana, really nicely done. The eyes are super bright and vibrant with that white. And you even got the painted tongue in there too, uh, which is really cool. Of course, this is probably not going to be the go-to expression for Raph for me because 
well, he's way too happy here, but it looks like, you know, like any one of the turtles, really. This looks like any one of the four just it happens to be raft this time around so i do think that the the sculpt is really nicely done no issues with paint on this guy and overall it's just a really cool fun figure that happens to also look exactly like you might think a turtle from the cartoon would look like now we have to do some size comparisons here and we're going to do various types of turtles i'm going to go back to some vintage stuff we're going to talk about the modern stuff we're going to talk about some bigger modern stuff as well so to start with we've got our super seven raft and we've got our NECA Wave 1 raft down there. And you can see, I mean, they come up to just about mid-thigh level raft from Super 7 being a little bit taller. And then, of course, you can see that the overall style between our smaller scale cartoon raft is very similar with this guy, except for when you get to that head sculpt. The head sculpt is very, very different. And again, they, they truly don't look anything alike there because our Wave 1 Toon Turtles were very, very early design style of turtles. And then the later stuff, like this guy, is a little bit more of the style guide approach, which, again, they look very similar, but at the same time uh, are very not. And then, of course, you know, the, the Super 7 Raft doesn't look anything alike, but it's, of course, something for size comparison to give you an idea of just how giant this giant size turtle actually is. And then as far as some larger scale stuff, we've got our new Toon Giant Size with the original quarter scale turtle, the Raphael from the movie line. And you can see that these guys are not the same height. And honestly, that took me by surprise because quarter scale is quarter scale, right? But that's not what it actually means. This is legit quarter scale. So in the movies, the turtles are bigger than they are in the cartoon. They are smaller in the cartoon. So these guys are a couple inches different here, which honestly isn't a big deal for me because frankly, I still don't know where this big guy's gonna go or where the rest of them are gonna go. But uh, it was interesting to see that they are different. Granted, there is nothing else really worth comparing here. They are very similar in many ways in terms of construction, but at the same time, they look entirely different. It's just two different iterations of the same monster turtle. And then last but not least, we do have a few vintage counterparts to talk about. Again, there's not a whole lot to compare to, really, but in terms of just giving you a sizing comparison. So we've got the giant size 2003 Raphael here on the right, which honestly, I don't remember why I even have this. I didn't buy any of the others, and I never opened my 2003 stuff at the time, but I opened him, which is, is kind of weird. And then we've got my original uh, giant size Raphael here over here. He is completely naked and devoid of his accessories because I just brutalized these as a kid, but they remain with me to this day. So you can see they're kind of comparable in height. These two both have some sort of kind of weird squatty design going on, so they can't stand exactly straight up, but they are very, very similar in overall height. And then these two in particular are pretty, pretty similar in overall beefiness, I suppose, but not a lot to compare to in terms of aesthetics, but just to give you an idea of what they look like next to each other. Now, as far as accessories goes, this guy is pretty stacked. It's not like a dozen different accessories and the weirdest, most obscure kind of stuff, but he has he has a lot of the stuff that you really want him to have. And uh, that's pretty much all I can ask for, I suppose. So uh, to start with, let's do the hands, get those out of the way. So he's got uh, gripping hands on him in the box, and these are actually the hands that are meant to be also utilized with the size where they're being gripped in that sort of secondary way where he's holding on the blades. Uh, but we've got, of course, a set of thumbs up hands. We've got a set of pointing hands as well. So you've got those to complement him. And then, of course, uh, you know, again, still got your gripping hands, which can hold his accessories and utilize the size. So you can put him in like this or you can put him in uh, like this. So you can do that thing, which is my preferred way. I usually do one of each just because I really love that look. So you get two psi. Uh, they're just kind of uh, that sort of flat gray cartoony color with the with the brown handles. So we got those pretty standard stuff there. They're very similar to what comes with the regular uh, smaller scale cartoon raft. And then we've got some pizza because you, you've got to have pizza with a turtle. So you've got two pieces of pizza here. And these actually will make a pie when it comes to having all four turtles because this is two pieces and they're keyed and they pop in together, uh, which is pretty cool. I like that. So you can make, make your own turtle pizza here. Sculpt is really nice, good paint applications on it. It's a pizza. And then you've got maybe one of my more favorite accessories when it comes to Raph is you've got the actual drooping slice of pizza that is meant 
to be pierced by a size. So you can do one of these numbers. And I love that. I, it's, it's a goofy thing. It's something that you don't necessarily need, but I love, I love when they include that. Uh, this thing is kind of a surprise to me. I didn't really know what to expect with this, but we do get a turtle com. So it looks, you know, pretty unassuming here, but it functions. Sculpt on it is really nice. Paint is really good, but it opens up. And that's really awesome. Sculpt on the inside with more paint application, more little details, and then the antenna actually pop out as well. So that's just rad. I really like that. Uh, I don't know that I'll ever really display him with this because it's, it's not, not a big display piece for me. I use it on a Donnie, uh, but not with Raph, generally speaking. But it's a cool thing to have, and I love the fact that it actually uh, opens and closes. That is... That's just really cool and fun and exciting. But the most exciting aspect of the turtle here, at least for me in terms of changing this guy up and what it means for the smaller scale line as well, are these heads. Because if, you, if you've been paying attention and been following along with these, you know that these have swappable parts. So we're gonna try to swap them. We pop this head off as gracefully as I can. So we pop this head off, let's move him back, and we've got our head here. So you've got Raph, and he's he's happy, and he's, he's smiling, all that good stuff. But if you pop the head out from underneath, you've got a mouth, and you've got eyes. So you've got pieces right here. We, can, we do get another head sculpt, though. So we get this one. We get the angry head sculpt. So he's kind of yelling, and he's got the sort of scowling expression. This also does the same thing. So you can pop the head out from underneath, and you've got a mouth, and you've got eyes. So now you can take them, and you know, here's the happy one, and with the, the different set of eyes. And then you sort of pop it on, and he looks... He looks pretty nefarious, honestly. So you can swap them in and out, which I just absolutely love. So you've got multiple options here uh, with these. So you can do something like with this one, with the sort of yelling face and the regular eyes. You might have to push a little hard and you've got him sort of like, kind of freaking out almost. He's like screaming, scared. Very non rap expression, I think. Uh, but I do actually like this one. That looks like he's up to no good. So this is really cool. I like the idea behind that. And then, I mean, I'll just throw it back on there for now. But it looks really good. It works very, very well. And I do really like the, the you know, as my wife has called it, the swaptions when it comes to having the ability to change these pieces in and out. And it makes for just an easier, easier way to do things rather than having a box with a bunch of extra heads in so they can just make two separate parts, you clip them together and you're good to go. So it works really well, it looks really good. Again, you do have a number of options here and I just like the idea behind it and I especially am really curious to see how it applies to the smaller scale figures going forward. So, yeah, it's a pretty solid figure. I mean, at the end of the day, this is exactly what I thought it was going to be uh, and what more can you ask for? No surprises, outside of maybe a few little surprises when it comes to accessories, but the figure itself is very much what I wanted it to be. It's that same figure we've had for years, just done up in a larger scale with articulation improvements and a really cool new head system. I think he comes with a lot of cool accessories. Sculpt is great, paint is really good, he moves really well, and I just haven't had any problems with it. I think it's a nice figure, it looks good on your shelf, and it's gonna really complement the quarter scale turtles in the movie line by having some larger scale stuff in the tune line. So that's gonna do it for this look at the giant size Raphael. Let me know what you guys think. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and share, and until next time.